Hello class and welcome to our chapter one review lesson. So to begin, I want us to find the GCF of these numbers. Who can remind me what GCF means? Jack, what is GCF? Greatest common factor. Whoop, greatest common factor. So what are the factors of 21 then? Um, three and seven. So we got three and seven. Is that it? No. No, what else? Uh, one and 21. One and 21. We cannot forget those. We always must include that. Notice again how I wrote it. Perfect. What about the factors of 35? So one and 35, and then five and seven. Are there any more? Nope, we're good. What about 49? What are the factors of 49? One, seven, and 49. So yes, one and 49, and seven and seven. So I hear a lot of you guys saying, you know, like one, five, you know, this. We want to see them in our matching pairs so that we can remember them. Perfect. So then, using our fingers, what is the greatest common factor between these ones then? Using our fingers. Yes, our greatest common factor is seven. That's the biggest number they have in common. Greatest meaning biggest. Common meaning the ones that they share. And factor is what they can be divided by. So the numbers factors multiply to a multiple multiples are made up of factors what about this one let's find the greatest common factor of this one so first of all who can tell me the factors of three what are the factors of three brody one and three one and three perfect damar do you know the factors of six and one perfect one and six and do you know another? Lior? Two and three. Perfect. Two and three. Excellent. And then Joshua, what are the factors for eight? One and eight and two and four. Perfect. So using our fingers, what's the greatest common factor for these numbers? Ooh, we're seeing some mix up. Yes, the greatest common factor is one. That is the only number all of them share. There is always such a thing as a greatest common factor. There is always gonna be a greatest common factor. Sometimes it's just one. What happens though if I didn't include this eight? Okay, now this eight is gone. I don't care about the eight. Using our fingers, what's the new greatest common factor? Yeah, I already see you guys doing it beforehand too. I'm super proud. Yes, three. So it all matters what numbers we have. We have to take all numbers into consideration. So every single one of the numbers must have that match. So we saw this one right here. We've seen this one before. A grocery store clerk has 16 oranges, 20 apples, and 24 pears. The clerk needs to put an equal number of apples, oranges, and pears into each basket. What is the greatest number of baskets that can be made so that there is no fruit left? Here's my problem with this question. The one issue that I have is that they said they need to put an equal number into each basket. What they mean is they meant an equal number of the apples. Everyone has to have the same amount of apples. Everyone has to have the same amount of oranges. Everyone has to have the same amount of pears. But it does not mean that they all have to be the same. It does not mean that two apples, two oranges, two pears in each one. We need our baskets to look identical. Lennox, what am I looking for here? What is my goal? What am I looking for? Um, the greatest common factor. Yes. So I'm looking for the greatest common factor. I see that word greatest right there. That's what's telling me I'm looking for the greatest common factor. I've got 16, 20, and 24. Let's see. Damar, do you know the greatest common factor between these numbers? So Jack? Four. Yes, it's four. 16 is one and 16, two and eight, four and four. 20 is one and 20, two and 10, four and five. 24 is one and 24, two and 12, three and eight, four and six. 
So the greatest common factor, the biggest number they have is four. So it's asking what's the greatest amount of baskets I can make. I can make four baskets. So I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make different, I'm gonna make better baskets. Hold on, cause I wanna do this. While we're talking about this though, I wanna say, does anybody remember what my trick was? How we know that we've gotten all of our factors? Lennox, how do we know that I've gotten all of my factors? Oh, yeah, so he says that because, you know, they all found the same number, I found my greatest common factor. Yes, but how do I know that, for example, how do I know that uh, there are no more factors for 24? How do I know there are no more factors for 24? Just without, like, without doing that, what do we think, Nathan? Uh, because there were only, like, two between four and six. Yes. The only number between there is the number five. We got close down to the bottom. They're super close to one another. The only number between them is five. Five is not a factor, so it doesn't work. Here there are no numbers between. Here there are no numbers between. So that's how we can tell. So based on this, I wanna know, using our fingers, how many oranges am I gonna put in each basket? How many oranges am I gonna put in each basket? Yeah, for those of you holding your hand up, I'm gonna put four oranges in each basket. How many apples am I gonna put in each basket with our hands up, with our fingers up? How many apples are we gonna put? So see, we're getting a little bit of this confusion. We're not gonna put four apples. We're not gonna put four apples. Who can tell me how many we are gonna put? Let's see. Yes, Samantha. Uh, five. Why are we gonna put five? Because um, the, no the number down there, uh, at the bottom of 20 is 4 to 5. Yeah, so its matching pair is 5. The matching pair to our oranges was 4. The matching pair to our apples is 5. So based on that, how many pairs do you think you're going to put in each one using our fingers? Yeah, we're going to put in 6 because that right there is the matching pair. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now if you went to the store to buy these baskets, all of these baskets are identical. It doesn't matter which basket you pick up, you'll get the same amount of fruit and the same for each of them. Perfect. So now we have this problem. Using the table, which is this right here, how many out of 400 like math? So first things first is I only interviewed some people. Remember this? I only interviewed some people. How many people did I interview? In this group, how many people did I interview? Total, how many people did I interview? 21. I interviewed 20 people. So based on that, what is my initial ratio then? What would my initial ratio be for filling this out? What do we think? Yes? Every seven every seven seven to twenty perfect seven to twenty seven out of twenty he's perfect that's our initial ratio seven people like math and our total was 20 but i want to find out when it's 400 i don't know now i've got a question we got to go from two or from 20 to 400 can i do that in a single jump or do i have to double jump it single jump yes double jump no put that single jump yes double jump no Yes, I can single jump. Lennox, how do I go from 20 to 400? Um, you multiply it by 20. Yes, and what we do to the bottom, we do to the top. Seven times 20. Seven times two is 14. And then with the little zero at the end gives us 140. What that means is that if I had 400 students that I talked to, probably 140 of them would pick math as their favorite subject. That's the point of what we're doing. These are two equivalent fractions. These are two equivalent fractions. Okay, we're gonna come back to ratio tables in a bit. But before we do that, who can tell me the initial ratio that I have here? Who can tell me the initial ratio? So look at it right down here at the bottom, my initial ratio. Let's see, Nick. Uh, three over 
Edson says, eight, eight, eight. Edson says it's three over eight. It's actually, well, the number was nine. But do we agree? Do we think the answer is three over nine? Some of us are saying yes. But we're having a problem here. What was the problem? There's something that it's not. Emma? Um, I think it's nine over three. Yes, it is nine over three or nine to three. Why is it like that, Emma? Because it has hearts first. Yes, she paid attention. Look down here. I wanted it in hearts to stars. So I want it nine to three. Excellent, that's our initial ratio. Cool, we're done, right? No, Jack, what do I have to do? You need to simplify it. And what do I get when I simplify? Three to one. Yes, their greatest common factor is three. So I get three to one, which makes sense. Here's a circle. Here's a circle. There's a circle. Aren't those all identical? Don't they all have the same things in them? Yep. And I can't combine them in any other way that makes them smaller with the same things. So this is our correct answer. Three to nine is not correct. Three to nine is not correct. Nine to three is not correct because we need to simplify. So what about this one? What do we think is correct here? Is it going to be eight to four? Or is it going to be four to eight? Eight to four or four to eight? What do we think it's gonna be then, Alina? Why do you think it's gonna be four to eight? Yeah, perfect. So she says the requirement is the stars first. So it's gonna be four to eight, right? I wanna simplify this. So I wanna simplify. What is the greatest common factor between four and eight, Jaden? So she says it's two, or he, he says it's two. What do we think, Brody? It's four. It's four. So I can divide them both by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. I'm sure that that's what he meant when he was saying when Jaden said that. So that would be our simplified version. One star to every two hearts. One star to two hearts. One star to two hearts. One star to two hearts and one star to two hearts. Congratulations. So we, we made it all like that. Let's look at this one. We did this one. Four kids spend $12 at, uh, on lunch. At this rate, how much would 10 kids pay? What is our initial ratio? What is the initial ratio, Lennox? Uh, for the kids? For the four kids or for the 10 kids? For the four kids, our initial ratio. Oh, four, four twelfths? Perfect. Four twelfths, four to twelve, anything like that. Perfect. And where am I going to put the ten? I'm going to say here's an orange circle. Here's a blue circle. Here's a purple circle. And here's a green circle. Where am I going to put that ten? Edson, where am I going to put that ten? He says, I'm going to put the 10 in the purple circle. Do we agree? Yes or no? Using our yes or no's. So we're getting a lot of no's. Let's see, Samantha, why don't I put it in the purple circle? The kids are supposed to be on top. Ah, uh-huh. Yes, so we have to keep the pairs the same. This is four kids. This is $12. So I need to keep 10 kids on the top. And I don't know how many dollars. Now, what we heard Savannah say was, oh, no, it's supposed to go next to it because, you know, then we have this blank spot in the middle. But why do I have that blank spot in the middle? Why do I have it, Brody? Because you need to double jump. I need to double jump. Why do I know that I need to double jump? Why do I know I need to double jump? I want somebody new. Jack, how do I know I need to double jump? Because you can't get to um, 10 by four just by doing just by multiplying yeah there's nothing i can do i can't multiply four by a whole number to get to ten so emma what number am i going to go to instead what is their greatest common factor that i'm going to go to two perfect and then to make our process easier from four to two i divide by two so i do the same thing here and i get six 
To get from 2 to 10, I multiply by 5. So I do the same thing and I multiply by 5 and get my x to be 30. Remember, we always point towards the x. We're pirates. We want to solve towards the x. So we want to solve that. Here's this one, because we're going to talk about ordered pairs. This is having to do with graphing and stuff. So, Miss Diaz works as a tutor after school. She earns $45 every hour that she tutors. So she earns $45 every hour that she tutors. Based on that, I want us to fill out this chart. So Angeline says 90, yes. Gabriella, do you have the one for the next one? So Miles got 180. Jade, do you have the one for number five? Thank you, so Nathan, it's 135. And let's see, Edson, do you happen to have it for number five? Let's see then. Damar, what is it? 225. Yeah, 225. Great job, you guys. So now if I'm gonna write it in an ordered pair. Ordered pairs look like this. We got a parentheses and we got a comma in the middle. And then we've got two things that we got. We got two things, okay? So, is it gonna go like this? Is it gonna be X comma Y? Or is it gonna be Y comma X? I'm gonna fill this in. So if you think it's X comma Y, I want you to hit the go slower button. If you think it's the Y comma X, I want you to hit the go faster button. Yes, it is this one right here. It is the X comma Y. So it is not Y comma X. And does anybody have a way that they remember that it's X comma Y first? How do we know that it's X comma Y? What ways do we have there? Anna Jolene? You guys remember that X comes first? Do you have a trick, Jack? I remember the alphabet. The alphabet X comes before Y. Look at that. That's my perfect way right there. He remembers the alphabet. That's exactly my trick. X comes before Y in the alphabet. So X comes before Y in our ordered pairs. Then we have things called dependent and independent variables. So we were talking about this. Independent variable, that's the variable that does not change. It is the variable that... Um, when we put it in, the other one is dependent on it. So the other one is dependent on this variable. So looking at these, which one do we think is the dependent variable? Do we think the dependent variable is our, uh, is the hours or is it the money? Which one depends on the other? So by that I mean, do the hours I work depend on the money I get or does the money I get depend on the hours I work? So do the hours I work. Brody, what do you think? The hours you work depends on the money you get. The hours I work depends on the money we get. What do we think? We agree? Yes? No? Some of us are saying, some of us, we're going to half and half. Lennox? So actually, it's a great guess, but the hours I work. So if I work four hours, that's when I get $180. I don't just get paid and then get to decide how much I work. I, don't, I have to work in order to get paid. So the dependent one is my money. So the independent one, my independent one is my X. And my dependent one is my Y. That's just something that we know for the future. Unit. We were learning about this before. Unit rates. What is a unit rate, you guys? What's a unit rate? Nobody knows. Come on, unit rate. Let's see, Brody. Um, doesn't a unit rate have to have one in it? Yes, it has something to do with one. It means it is over one. Remember, we got that phrase uni or even that un. You know, we've got unicorn, unicycle. Unibrow. 
unite, stuff like that. All of these mean one, come together as one. So how much would this unit rate be? So I've got 20 and 8 tenth gallons of paint and I've got four containers. So how much is my unit rate? How much is in each singular container? How much is in... You're muted, Ms. Diaz. Lennox, how much is in each container? Um, it would be 20 and 8 over 1. So he's very close, 20 and 8 over 1. So it's very similar. But in this case, what we would have is we'd have these equivalent ratios. Jack, what do we get for one can? 5.2. Yeah, 5.2. So here's what we did, and this is what we basically did. We got our initial ratio. So we set up our initial ratio. And that initial ratio was we had 20.8 gallons of paint, and we had four containers. I wanted to find out how much I had with one container. So I divided by four. I divided by four. 20 divided by four is five. Eight divided by four is two. So I get 5.2, five and two tenths. Great. That's exactly how we do this. I want you guys to look at this one for a second. Here is this first ratio table that I made. It is wrong. It is all sorts of messed up. Take a look at it and I want you to try to guess what I did. Where did I go wrong? What did I do? So take a look at it first. Lior, what did I do wrong with this first one? Um, if you want to... For... So, so what you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Oh. So from get to two to one, I have to divide by two. To what I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So what did I actually end up doing? What was the mistake then that I made, Brody? What did I do instead of doing that? Um, well, you um, divided two um, by two to get to one, but on the bottom you didn't do that. What if I just did this? Look at that. I'm doing the same to the top and the bottom, right? Both of them, I subtracted one, same to the top and bottom. I added 14, same to the top and bottom. Wait, but why doesn't this work? Why doesn't this work, Brody? Because you're not allowed to subtract or um, add. Yes, you are not allowed to subtract or add ratios, equivalent fractions, all of this. They must be done with multiplication and division. So multiplication, division only. So what would my actual answer be? What number would go in this circle right here, Lior, right there? Three. Perfect. And then what number is gonna go right there, Jack? Um, sorry, give me one sec. You kinda caught me off guard yeah. there. 45. No. Let's look at this one. Here, I wanna find equivalent fractions. This is the same thing as finding your greatest common factor, same thing as doing all of this. Yes, Anna Jolene. So, I'm, um, on the first one, I found the way, I didn't try and find this, but um, it said two. What way are my arrows going to point? If my arrow is going to point that way, hit go faster. If my arrow is going to point that way, hit go slower. So if it's going to be facing towards the right, hit go faster. If it's to the left, hit go slower. Let's see. Alex, why do you know that it's going to be going to the right? Because, well, if you look at that, four, four fifths is just a simplified version of the fraction to the right. Mm -hmm. And guessing by what it is, four, 28 divided by 4 is 7. So then that would mean 5 times 7, which is 35. Perfect. So we go there. Do you remember what I like to call us when I say what the way we remember to point our arrows? What do I like to call us? What do I like to say that we are? What is it, Brody? Pirates. Yeah, we're math pirates. We always want to go towards the X. We want to point our arrow towards the X. If we're doing it not towards the X, it's going to make it just more difficult on us. So let's look at this one. I added it up for us because I wanted to make it easier. So find and simplify the ratio of how many people like cats compared to the total amount of people. So the total amount of people is 52. What is my initial ratio then? What is my initial 
ratio. Who can tell me the initial ratio? I wasn't really realized what you were asking at first, but now I get it. Um, 8 to 52. Perfect. 8 to 52. Our initial ratio is just the information we have in our passage. Here, cats to total. Cats to total. Excellent. So we're all good there. But I also have to simplify. You always need to simplify. Jack, how can I simplify? Do you know what the answer is when we simplify? I'm sorry. Uh, two. So Leo says their greatest common factor is two. So if I divided them both by two, I would get four over 26. Huh. I think I can still simplify this one. I got it, I got it. D yes, Jack. <laughs> it's four. Their greatest common factor is four. So what do I get when I simplify? You get two over, I'm pretty sure, is it, uh, is it 13? Yes. Two over 13? Perfect. So I get my answer to be two over 13, or like I wrote right there, two to 13, just like I see here, exactly. Always remember that you have to get as simplified as possible. 13's prime, I can't get any smaller than that one. So here I've got this pie, okay? So I've got this piece of pie right here. One of them has six slices and three have been eaten. The other one has eight slices and I need to figure out the equivalent. Is this gonna be a single jump or a double jump? What do we think, raising our hands, single jump or double jump? Leor? Double. Double, because as we mentioned earlier, we can't go straight from six to eight. So the number that they have in common, what is their greatest common factor? What's the greatest common factor? Are you using your fingers? Yeah, most of you are getting it. Their greatest common factor is two. So from six to two, I divided by three. Divide by three here, we get one. From two to eight, I multiply by four, so I do the same here and I get four. So let's watch. I'm gonna make my new try, or I'm gonna make my new pie. And then this is something that I was really stoked to do earlier. So now I've colored in all of my pies. Are these all the same, you guys? Yeah. In fact, watch this. This is something I really like. Look at that went right over it's the equivalent fraction and then i continue it goes right over so that's the equivalent fraction we see look at that it's so cool i love this click and drag thing so so we're gonna now play the single or the double jump game this one i'm just gonna fill out pretty basic numbers so we're gonna start here just single versus double hops let's look at this first one five and twenty is this going to be a single jump or a double jump? So using the participants, those will be the keys that we use. So I'm getting, so it's some of our voting. Yes, it's going to be a single jump because I can go straight from 5 to 20. I don't need to jump to anything in the middle. I don't need to go to anything in the middle to change my answer. I don't need to do that. What about this next one? Let's see. Single jump or double jump? Single jump or double jump? Yeah, we need the double jump in this case. I can't go from eight to 12. What about this one? Single jump, double jump. Single jump, double jump. Yeah, single jump again because I can just divide by 30. So one of these things that we know, these single, these double, all of these, we really only have single jumps and double jumps. Those are the two that we need to know. So those are the two that we need to know. So this is a good example of a graph like I'm showing you. It's got the four quadrants. Strangely enough, it wraps around like that counterclockwise. Here, our X and Y's are both positive. Here, our X is negative and our Y is positive. Here, both of them are negative, and here our X is positive and our Y is negative. We don't have to worry about that too much. We're only gonna deal with positive numbers right now. So here is point zero. That is my 
What? Does anybody remember what this point is called? That point right here where it's zero. Anybody remember what that's called? Lior? A right angle. It's called the origin. It's called the origin. That is where everything originates from. And I remember because here, that's a zero. That's our, oh, look, they look the same, right? So it's our origin. It's where everything originates from. It's where everything originates from. I checked everything so far. So I'm going to plot some points. And I want you guys to tell me what the point is, okay? So here's my point right here. Here's my very first point. What would the ordered pair for that be? What would I write for that one? Lennox? Um, it would be two over four. So he says two comma four in this case, because it's ordered pairs and stuff like this. What do we think using the yes or no buttons? What do we think? So it is not correct. We're almost correct. But what would make it correct? What is the correct one, Lior? Four comma two. Four comma two, yes. As we mentioned earlier, we always go X comma Y. And now how do I know which axis is which? Do you guys remember my fun little way that we can remember which axis is which? Does anyone remember? Emma, do you know? Um, because of the alphabet? Very, yes, very close to the alphabet. So the way we know which axis is which is this line, look at that. That makes a Y, capital Y. And the other line, oops, we're dead. We got little X's for eyes. That one is our X axis. So that's how we know what they are. Literally, this one is shaped like a Y. So that's our Y axis and this one's shaped, it's like our little dead person. So it's shaped like an X. So that's what we've got. So we do it X comma Y here, excellent. What about this next point? I want someone to tell me, what is that point? So what is that point? Jack, do you know? Sorry, I just fell out of my chair. Um. Perfect, so we get three comma six. So most of you got it correct. The correct answer is eight comma zero. Some of you put zero comma eight. Remember we do X comma Y. Based on that one, based if that one was eight comma zero, what do we think the pink dot is gonna be? What do we think the pink, so exactly it is zero comma two. Look at how great you guys are at doing that. That's all it takes. When we're doing equivalent fractions, however, even easier. When we're doing equivalent fractions and we're graphing those, when we're graphing all of them, it's gonna typically form a line. So I'm gonna make one here, 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 here. Notice that it forms a nice direct line. And what's happening with each of these? If I was asking you to describe the pattern in this graph, it's doing what, Lennox? What is happening in this graph? Um, they're, both, they're all moving one space by a space, I think. Yep. That's so they're going to the right one. What else, Anna Jolene? Oh, I have a question. Oh, yes? It's, it's going up by two. So it said it's adding two. Perfect. So it's going up by two. Every time it goes over one, it goes up by two. Excellent, you guys. You guys are killing it. You guys are doing so well. So I'm really, really proud of you. Remember these double jumps. Remember these single jumps. Try to work through it like that, okay? Excellent.